Welcome, adventurer. Please, have a seat. For what I'm about to tell you is a story that is still being written and is as old as the sands of time. You see, in the beginning, there were three gods and one goddess. The three gods' names were as follows. Autumn, the god of creation. Silios, the god of chaos. And Indos, the god of the end. And then there was the goddess Zion, the goddess of narrative and fate. You see, during this time, there was nothing but the endless expanse of the astral sea. A lazy river of stardust and nothingness, floating through the void with a direction that is both unknown and uncaring. Mixed with what is known as the Untamed Sea, a chaotic clash of fire, water, rock, and raging winds. They say that was all there was in the beginning before the gods' arrival. But whether or not that's true, no one really truly knows. There is much speculation on where the old ones come from and why these gods chose this cosmic void as their plaything. But what we do know is that on their arrival, Autumn saw potential in the raw void. While others saw this as a useless space, Autumn saw a canvas. While the other gods were busy with their own affairs, Autumn took this time to make something truly special from the existing materials within what would one day be called the Elemental Chaos by those who read the stars. Within this chaos, he formed two spears, the Feywild and Elsewhere, one land of pure beauty and imagination, and the other more tame and grounded in logic and reason. These worlds merged in the middle to allow free travel to and fro. When Autumn finished his creation, he was filled with joy and he smiled. A smile that beamed so bright, it lit the world in light. A light that turned into the star that lights the world even to this day. One that would one day be called Rhysus Solius, or Laughter of the Sun. Soon after this time, Autumn presented Elsewhere in the Feywild to the other gods as a gift, where they could make their creations or create their successors to rule the domain. During this time, the gods formed their descendants, immortals who would live in the world and guide their people. Autumn created their son Exodus, who subsequently created the guardians of the land, powerful animal spirits known as the zodiacs that protect the land. Fast forward 12,000 moon cycles later, a new issue arose. The world had been depelted of its food and resources since no one was passing on to the next life. During this time, Indos created some children of his own. Botrix, the goddess of woe and disease. Ergo, the god of death. And Zadar, the god of rest and sleep. They were created as a necessary fix to the issue at hand and to prevent the world from an untimely end. As much as it pained Autumn to see his creations move on to the next unknown, he understood Indos' reasoning. So, with that, Ergo was appointed the grim task of ending the lives of those who had reached their narrative end. His touch was gentle and easy, like a thief in the night. To give a place for those who passed away, Indos formed a new realm, known as the Land of Dolio, for the souls to be sent in to be judged on their fate. Whether that be within the seven heavens of Mount Celestia, or the nine hells ruled by Osmodius, 
as time progressed during the new era of sorrow, Ergo realized he had his work cut out for him and decided to elect his brother and sister. While his brother Zadar enjoyed aiding his older brother with peacefully helping the wildlife and mortals pass on to the next world, his sister Botrix secretly despised most of Autumn's creations. She didn't see or understand why he took pleasure in such things. She found them simple-minded, crude, and useless. She hatched a plan to cause great bloodshed and death by spreading a horrible plague that lasted a year, otherwise known as the Year of Withering. During this time, Autumn was brought much sadness seeing his people dying and sick, causing him to cry the crystal tears that would become the moon known as Crystalia. This moon blocked out the sun with an eclipse, plunging the world into darkness for over two years, otherwise known as Luctus Obscurum, or the morning darkness in your tongue. With great haste, Botrix took a mortal form and appeared to the tribe of mages known as the Mages of the Black Crown, a more nefarious cult of underworld worshippers. It was here she met with the founding father of the coven, a man by the name of Saboteur Blackwood. It was there that she convinced him that the Year of Withering was Autumn's fault, instilling a rage within the tribe and causing them to turn their back on Autumn. It was here she took up counsel with the tribe, advising them that she would grant them immortal life and home on the world of her creation. If they helped her to defeat Autumn and remove this world from existence. For whatever ill-fated reason, Salvatore agreed. With Botrix and the Black Crown working together, they performed a complicated ritual to grant them the power needed to make a terrifying spell of planet killing potential. When the day finally approached for the spell to be ready, they confronted Autumn when he was visiting the Feywild and unleashed it upon him. The attack was ruthless and Autumn did not stand a chance. This male violet spell that would later be called the Purple Sun by scholars destroyed everything within its path, leaving behind death and purple amethyst crystals. After Autumn's form was shattered, and his mighty being crumbled to the ground. The second phase of the spell begun. What was once a purple glowing ball of energy soon took on the frightful form of a skull. Thankfully, a loyal guardian spirit stepped in, a dragon by the name of Bahamut. Bahamut saw Bo tricks for her true nature and accused Salvatore of being foolish to allow for her to twist him into trying to kill off humanity. With every bit of power Bahamut had in him, he slowed down time around him, trapping him and the spell in a stasis of time stop to protect the world from utter destruction. But before he did, he cursed Salvatore to serve humanity as an immortal, as cosmic retribution for his crimes. He banished him to a lamp and forced him to use his magic to grant the one who found him three wishes, before the lamp would be sent to another place in the land to prevent any one man from ever having that much magical power again. As for Botrix, after Indos learned of the deed she had done, he took and had her banished to a realm that he made for her to serve all eternity completely separate from the other planes of existence. This land would be later called Shadowfell, a realm of fog, shadows, eternal twilight, and most of all, devoid of beauty. Now, adventurer, you would think that this is where the story ends. Good has overturned evil, and the main villain of the story has been finished. Well, <laughs> as I said... This story is still being written. You see, the gods and goddess lived by a series of equal power. The power was divided into four parts. Without that fourth part, there is now an imbalance, a cosmic pause in the internal chess game. 
As for now, the vote on what to do with Elsewhere lays in a stalemate. Indos had voted to have Elsewhere destroyed, as it brings them much sadness knowing the fate of his brother in arms. Meanwhile, the storyteller has proposed that they wait until the fates unwind and a new champion shines through to take the mantle of the fourth vote. The catch is, it has to be an immortal. While the eyes are on Exodus, the son of Autumn, he has gone into hiding after witnessing his father being vanquished. So, just like the sands in the hourglass, so is the fate of this world. Time is running out, and the question is asked, is humanity worth saving? This is where you come in. You see, there are ways to interact with this world, whether you choose to listen to the story unfold, or follow the clues as the pages are written. The choice is yours. Should you answer the call and take up pen for better worse. The road out there is dangerous. But good always finds a way to overturn evil. Or at least that's what they say. Godspeed, adventurer, and fair winds.